Hello everyone, and this is a review of How to Hide an Empire, a history of the greater United States by Daniel Immerwar. Now, this book has been out for a few years. I've been seeing it in nearly every bookstore. I've been meaning to read it, and then a month or two ago, I saw that it was on Chirp, the audiobook website or app for like $2. So I got it, and I really liked it. It was a good read. I feel like um, I wouldn't call it a casual read, but it was very digestible. It was easy to read. And, and of course, this was an audiobook, and it was very well done. The book is not exactly in chronological order, although it is split into two parts. Uh, part one is the colonial empire, and then part two is the pointillist empire, which is, I think, a good way to put it. Uh, so in part one, Immer War talks about uh, American expansionism. He talks about Daniel Boone and the Founding Fathers and their opinions on American expansionism. He talks about a, a little bit about uh, Native Americans. And I think the largest part of part one, at least it seems like, it, it was about the Guano Islands of the Pacific and I think Caribbean. Now, this is something I feel like a lot of people know vaguely about, but he gets into some details here. It's it's very interesting. It's it's very fun. At this point of the book, I was really thinking that, you know, this was kind of a book for casual readers because it was just so entertaining. So he talks about the acquisition of Guano Islands and foreign relations with some Latin American countries because they also wanted the Guano Islands. Um, he talks a good bit about uh, Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt. And of course, at that time, the late 1800s is when the American global empire really took off. So he doesn't really get to that point until about 90 or 100 pages in, but that's okay because he does a lot of setup and I believe it does pay off because you, you do see the continuity between some of the American ideology about expansion and empire in the 20th century version of empire as well. Especially insofar as Americans were confused about expansion and empire. I mean, even with the, the drafting of the United States, it wasn't clear what territories should be. Are they really part of the country if the country is a set of United States? You know, where do territories actually lie? Do they deserve any sovereignty? And who do they belong to? Uh, these are still questions we have largely to this day. I don't think we have a, a solid answer yet, and I think that Immer War would agree. So then he spends a lot of time on Puerto Rico and the Philippines, which were, of course, acquisitions after the Spanish-American War. He talks a, l a lot about uh, Americans building infrastructure in the Philippines. Um, a lot of times they were not practical, but the Americans also did contribute to a lot of the setup of modern day Manila and other cities. I believe the U.S. had the same architect who, desi who designed some of the world's fairs, build the cities of the Philippines. And uh, with Puerto Rico, I think a large portion of his focus is on the eugenics movement and um, how that was intertwined with Puerto Rico, which as an American, I surprisingly knew very little about. But So then in part two, the Pointillist Empire, uh, it's a lot about decolonization, but of course he emphasizes American international influence and how we have this kind of neo-empire especially right after the Second World War. He talks about the chemical and plastic revolution of the uh, 40s and 50s and 60s, and how that kind of took off. Uh, well, Americans were kind of inspired by the great success of the Germans, but then the Americans led the synthetic revolution on their own after that point. And so they didn't need to rely upon international or global goods as much because they could simply synthesize uh, things like rubber. 
So that took a lot of weight off the Americans once they had to rely less on foreign peoples and foreign countries giving them goods. He also talks about the happenstance of the spread of the English language as a global language, perhaps as the modern premier global language. Um, I don't know why I said perhaps. I mean, English is the lingua franca at this time. He also talks about um, what he calls Baselandia, which is basically to this day, the U.S. has military bases around the world. And he talks about how that influenced the, the countries that were hosting the bases. I mean, even with Britain, he makes the point that uh, American influence caused the British invasion with the music of the Beatles and uh, some other bands because of the American base in Liverpool. And then he talks a little bit about more contemporary events like the war in Afghanistan and and how that resembles a lot of past colonial ventures while also the advancement of technology makes it something completely different. But as you can see here, there's a lot of topics and again, it's not all in chronological order. The book is largely thematic. It will make you think a bit. And if you're an American history buff, but are not as fam familiar with some of these topics I've mentioned, I would definitely recommend picking it up. Anyway, thank you for listening. If you are interested in history, please consider following this channel and my main channel.